Welcome to UPCR 2023. My name is Mario de Ronde. I am working as a TAVI coordinator in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, and I'm uh, welcoming Professor Capodano, chief editor of the Euro Intervention Journal, uh, and I will have an interview with him. Thank you. Nice to see you, David. So my first question to you is, uh, what are the key steps for nurses and allied health professionals and other researchers to get uh, started with research? That's a very important question that uh, it's not really specific to the NAPS. I think it belongs also to doctors, uh, to fellows, uh, industry partners that want to bring new science. Uh, so I think that there are general statements here that are not really a category specific in a way. So I think uh, the first thing is the motivation. You need to want to do something in order to do it. So that's uh, uh, tricky because it's obvious, but the many fail just because they don't want this enough. Of course, uh, in many places you have uh, protected time to do research. In other places, uh, like mine, it's something that you do in your extra time, uh, like a hobby, unfortunately, sometimes. But uh, because the passion is the driver here, I think the first step is to find the motivation. The second is to find a good idea. That's important, and uh, I generally recommend uh, to my fellows that uh, they uh, observe what happens in their practice. They don't have to look for fancy ideas uh, that may sound uh, nice, innovative, but then they do not have those kind of patients that really um, support that idea. So they have to uh, reflect on their practice and find a good idea. After uh, the idea, then the point is to collect data. And my suggestion is to do it uh, in a prospective fashion rather than a retrospective fashion, because in this way, you can really feel the case report form, collect the data, and you do not uh, miss anything. Otherwise, if you go back in the past, uh, you get frustrated easily because many of the data have not been generated for that purpose. So find the motivation, find a good idea, and then, of course, collect data. I have another question because uh, not a lot of people speak so very well English as we, as we do. So, and maybe for the NAPS it's a problem to send in an abstract because they are afraid that they do not have the good language skills. So what do you suggest to help them and to come over the border to send in a good abstract? Let's say that nowadays uh, uh, this should no longer be a problem because there are many softwares that help you in translation and they do a good job. So of course you should also ask someone who has knowledge of the language to check that everything was not uh, lost in translation. But uh, if uh, someone wants to start and write in uh, the native language, uh, it's no problem at all. And then you will find a way which can be uh, a chatbot, it can be Google Translator. So it seems like I'm uh, promoting this. No, I feel that uh, these systems uh, have now an adequate level for uh, beginners. Of course, they do not do a perfect job, but, but then you have just to fine tune and clean. So the language should not be the barrier, I believe. It's a, more a matter of motivation. You write in your language, and then you find a way to translate it. Do you think, in addition to this question, that artificial intelligence will be in future one of the tools we can use, or the doctors can use? Let's say this is a reflection that I'm making in these days because this is something that uh, started since uh, some months. It's not something that we have uh, since years. And uh, I'm reflecting that uh, this is uh, artificial intelligence systems are here to stay. It's not something that is happening and then will disappear easily. At, the, uh, at this time, I would say that they are not very accurate in terms of generating contents. And I found the text that they generate quite superficial and uh, frequently inaccurate, especially when we are dealing with scientific matters. So I would not trust the text that they generate. Where I find this uh, um, chatbot easy and uh, useful is uh, to streamline the text, to correct it, uh, to avoid all the redundancy. In this way, if uh, they are uh, um, adequately prompted by the human, I think they are a helpful tool in a way. I feel that uh, at this stage they will not replace human, fortunately for, for us, but they are a kind of a companion in order to get a better text, to streamline the content, to organize and structure. So I'm very curious to see how this will evolve. So to empower the nurses to send in a good abstract for, for example, PCR or for your intervention journal or a nursing journal, what do you think will be the advantage for the patient care and the, the, the cooperation and work in our daily practice with the doctors? 
I'm very much convinced that uh, whoever participates in uh, research activities, whether a doctor, a fellow, a nurse, an allied professional, uh, this will generate good practice uh, in a way. Because when you f uh, follow a protocol, follow some steps that you have uh, predetermined, uh, obviously you are doing the right thing for that patient by definition, and you follow a kind of a checklist approach. You do not miss anything. So for me, who is doing good research is also doing uh, well for a, a patient. And I think the IPCI, your committee is doing great in that respect, in generating um, inspiring messages. And I see that uh, your sessions are very crowded now. There are a lot of NAPs that want to uh, learn about uh, good practice and good research uh, uh, in this year. But so you will support us when we need your help or help from the community My to engage? I will do my small part whenever you ask it. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for this good uh, answers and uh, I hope we will meet again next year, summer, in a good session together. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Of the same. <laughs>